Okay. Does your computer say recording on? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. All right. Very good. All right. So we're going to talk about the central tendencies. So this is the, the beginning of the lesson. And so how do you determine the central tendencies? So I want to talk to you about the mean, the median, the mode. And so that's obviously this um, lecture piece here. So you notice that it says a survey of 10 adults, and you notice that there are 10 numbers of those obviously relate to the adults. And so if I take these and I send the data to Excel, so I'm sending it to Excel, and there it is. Let me see if I can get my my screens to work together. So I don't have to be fidgeting left and right. Uh, there you go. So, okay. So I want you to notice something. I'm going to send you this Excel, by the way, FYI. Um, here, I'm going to do the average or the mean. I'm going to call it mean or average. And this is going to be equals average. In Excel, there is no mean, the mean is the average. So it basically says, hit that and hit Excel, collect the numbers, and there is your average. So 42, 47.2. You wanna know what the mean data is. The median, I'm gonna put here. Now median is also good for a central tendency, especially for central tendencies where the data is skewed. What I mean is if the, the data were skewed left, right, or left or right skew, do you know what that is, left or right skew? Yeah, no, yes. <clears throat> uh, that's like where the bars go either on, on whatever side they're heaviest on is the skew. Yeah. All right. So if it's left skew, the numbers are really low. And if it's right skew, the numbers are very high or they tend to group that way. And at their normal distribution, they tend to be a normal curve. So in this case, I'm gonna say equal median, and I'm gonna double click on median, highlight the numbers, and there you go, you got 47. And then the mode. Now this, is, this gets tr tricky. Let me do this. I'm gonna take this data set, and I'm gonna take it and move it over here a little bit. I can't see to get it to move. Let me get it to move. Okay. I want this to be over here. Oh, for some stinking reason, it's not moving. Okay, fine. So you're going to go equals mode. And you see how it says multiple MULT mode? It says single mode and it's just mode. So I'm gonna go multiple mode, highlight the numbers and hit enter. And it says 47 is the mode. So if you look at the numbers in this case, technically 47 is the mode because there's one, two, and there's two of those. And I see a 40, I only see one. 143, 145, and that is the mode. So the mode is going to be right there. And again, I'm going to go equals mode. Hitting all, enter, 47 is the mode. All right, so what is the mean of this data set, the mean of the data set, since we already did it, is 47.2. I'm sorry, I have a question about the mode. Why did you choose the multiple one? What's the difference between? Multiple and binomial versus mo one mode, right? So I said, like, for example, in this case, you only have 10 data pieces, right? It's 10 pieces, you can see that there is only one mode. Right, it's easy to see, right? 
Well, what if you had a hundred of these or a thousand? Now you want the Excel to tell you, hey, there's more than one mode. So for example, let me just to give you devil's advocate, let me just show you one example where we're gonna have multiple modes. I'm adding a number, okay? And I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go equals mode. And I want multiple modes. And let's see if Excel behaves right, because my Excel's, yeah, there it is. Ah, look at that. What if it were more than that? What if it had an extra 40? No problem. Let's go equals mode. Multiple to mode. According to this, now I should have three. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this is something that I want you to be careful with. And I'm and I and I say this jokingly because Excel uh runs hot and cold. Depending on your model or meaning the, the type of uh version you have on Excel, it may do multiple modes and it may not be a problem for you. Try it with a small data set you can control. So literally open up Excel and put in five numbers and add an extra number again, this double a duplicate. And then test it to see. Mine is working today. Today. <laughs> Keyword. <laughs> All right. So we're good. Um, okay. So that's why I did multiple modes. Um, I believe the, the two extra I added were these two, right? All right. So, um, so that's why the mode is important. By the way, the mode is the number that happens the most often. And it just tells you where there, there is a skew or, you know, there's a mode to deal with. Okay. That's just an FYI. The median is also a central tendency. The median is the exact half. 50-50 on either side of that. Always. So the median is always good to use when you have skewed data. Okay. So what is the median of this data set of this data set? Well, we know already this 47. And we know that we had one mode, which was 47. And we check it. And it tells us, yeah, you're wrong. Or yeah, you're right. You know, do it again, that kind of thing. All right. Let's try another one. Are you guys cool with that? Or you got this? Give me thumbs up for another one. Yeah, I'll do another one. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take it. I'm good. All right. Let's do this one. Let's do this one quickly. So we have the number 30. You have the number 30 again. You have the number 19 three times. Is that three times? All right. I see the number 30 again. That's four times. So the number 30, no? No, that's three times the number number thirty. And sixteen. So there you are. If you want one decimal place, by the way, click on this. And I want you to look right here. You see this guy? Decimal decrease. So I'll hit it as many times as I need until I get to the place value. I don't have to guess the math. If math is not your thing or, or rounding is not your thing, use that. Okay, so let's go with, what is the median of this data set? 19. 19. What does it mean? 23.3. All right, and what's your mode? It's two, and then two it's of them. Nineteen. Nineteen and thirty. 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 Let me scooch it over. All right, that's a sweet deal. What? You're careful, you cannot have what? What did I do? What didn't I do? 
You, on B, you have an extra decimal oh, point okay. after. How fun. All right. So now it's happy. <laughs> All right. Uh, shall we do one more or you're good? Move on. We can move Thumbs on. Up if you want more, more. I'm good with moving on. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you got this. I'm going to send you this on Excel. So get ready for this one. You want me to send it now? Or you want to wait till I finish the whole caboodle? The whole lecture? I send wait it at the done. end. Okay, I'll send it at the end. All right. And when you put your numbers in, just copy the, num the, the whole number and you'll be good. All right. Very good. Let's do uh, the second example. So those are the central tendencies. Let's talk about um let's do comparisons of these and then I'll go back to the rejecting reasonable claims. Let's go to the median. Now this one. So this one is also about about central tendencies. It has a mean medium mode. And in this one, what does the data look normal to you? No. Yes, no. 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 Do you think it's left skew or do you think it's right skew? Now that right I don't skew. know. It's right skewed. This is right skewed. If you notice it, they the lower numbers are how many more of them? So 150 to 300, you have got 12 samples. And from 300 to 450, you have 10 samples. So you have quite a few that are on the low end. So All right. Can you repeat huh? that again? You said on the low end, it's... Low end is a numerical. You notice how... The... Okay, just stop for a minute, because I think I, I may, might have not even explained that. You see how it starts at zero, and it ends at 1,000? So yes. the lower numbers, the 150s, the 120, you know, 120, 100, 300, 400 are bigger. They have more, more uh, volume yes. of, of the data. So when you have more of those numbers, it tends to be right skewed. So here's something that I always tell my students and I want you to listen carefully. If you're a running coach, if you're a running coach, do you prefer that your people, your group, has scores in the low end or the high end? What do you prefer? Do you prefer them to be left skewed or right skewed? Left skewed because you want them to have a faster time. Right. So you want the numbers to be in the lower end, right? Right. So left, you want them to be right skewed. Okay, sorry, I had that backwards. Yeah, I know, I know. So, yes, I would want my people, if they're runners, I want to be left skewed. And if I'm looking at scores of aptitude, for example, of ability to answer test questions, do I want it to be left skewed or right skewed? You would want them to be right skewed. Yeah, you want yeah. that to be right skewed, absolutely. All right. So let's take a look at this and let's look at this um, this question. I'm looking at part A. It says, which measures of central tendency do not exist for the data? And if we choose anything that applies. So let's see. So let's send the data to Excel. It's a lot of data. So I'm just going to send it to Excel. And going to give it to me here. I'm going to, for the sake of your example, control copy. I'm going to go here and I'm going to drop it there. It's going to be example two. And so on this one, we're going to say, let's find the average. So let's go equals uh, mean. And notice that when I say mean, I want you to see geometric mean, harmonic mean, and the trim mean. Those three are means that do apply in statistics. 
In this case, they just want the average, which is the same difference. So I'm going to go equals average, and I'm going to highlight the data. OK, it should be there. And my data is 353.7308. And this is the mean. So I'm going to, I'm going to put here mean slash average, because in Excel, we don't have a mean other than those three that I showed you. Let's look for the median. So here, we're going to go equals median. Double click on the median. All right, highlight the data. All right, and there's our median and our mode. Remember what I said to you, uh, Shakita, that there's when there's more data, it makes it easier if you ask it to give you the mode, right? That's why we say multiple modes. So equals multiple modes. Make two modes. I'll hit multiple modes. Highlight the data. Enter. So it says 296 is the mode. That's interesting. Let's let's go ahead and let me do um let me do something real quick. I want it to give me let's see if can get it to uh, I'm trying to get it to give me the the sort. Do you see the sort anywhere? If you hit data Ah, yes. Where's Where do I go? Right there in the middle, say sort. Oh, you yeah, sort, A to Z. Okay, I want to see if it'll do it here. Does that look sorted to you? Yeah. Yes. That looks good. Okay, yeah. So it said 296 was the only mode. Mm-hmm. Okay, so look at no, no, it says 216 and 296. I know. 216 and 296. So yeah, so there's one, two there, and there's one, two there. All right. So 216 and 296. All right. So let's play the game then. Uh so which measure of central Tennessee does not show? What would you say? Well, they all show. They all show? Okay. Mm -hmm. So none of these. Uh, suppose the measurement 161, which is the smallest measurement of the data set, were replaced by a 70. OK, so we're going to get the, get rid of that. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the original numbers over here. They were 353.7308. They were 311, 216, and 296. OK, now, I want you to note that these are, are, are solid. They're not going to move. These numbers are not going to move. These numbers, however, are going to change now. So let's take the 161, and let's replace it with a 70. OK. And now, which measures of central tendency would be affected? Just the Who's mean. Affected? Just the mean? OK. The median is not changed, right? And the mode did not change. OK. Suppose it's starting with the original data set. The largest measurement was removed. Then which central tendency would, would change? So let's go back. We're going to go back to 161 here. And suppose the, the largest were removed. And they said just removed. OK. Who changed? The mean and the median. Mean and median, right? 
Right on. Okay, and lastly, which of the following data sets describes the distribution? What we already talked about this. Is it positively skewed, negatively skewed, roughly symmetrical? Positively skewed. Positive, positively skewed? There you go. That's our data. Is this one easy for you to do? I'm so sorry. Why is it positively skewed? Because it's a right skew. It okay. You the see right is it, positive, left is negative. Right. So what I'm getting at is the 12 to 10, those are bigger numbers, are are the larger scale numbers that happen. Um so it tends to be right skewed. When it's left skewed, the other numbers would be high. And the the twelve the the one fifty to four fifty would be low. Does that make sense? So to say it's skewed would be where the the least amount of integers are is going to yeah. be where the skew is. Yeah. Okay. So let me let me draw a picture this way. So. Uh, Let me not do this notebook now, <laughs> apparently. Um, yeah, so if it were left skewed, the, it would be the higher numbers would be the 1000s, the 750s, and the lower numbers would be the 150, 300, 450. And if it's roughly symmetrical, it would be lower on both ends and high in the middle. We're going to do a couple of these. You're going to see them eventually. Uh, are, are you ready for another? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, let's do another one. All right. Let's see. You could probably do this one yourself. This is also right skewed, posit positively symmetric, right? And I'm going to talk to you about the mean, median, mode in a moment. So in this one, you have data. I'm going to send it to Excel. Okay, so here's our data. I'm going to put it over here on this side. You're going to find the mean. You're going to do the mean, which is the average. So in this case, go equals average. Hold it down and Highlight it, and there's the number. All right. The next number is going to be the median. Okay, equals median. You double click it, highlight it, hold it, and that's 9.5. And the next thing we need is equals mode. So equals mode, and I want multiple modes. Enter. And it looks like I, you have quite a few. All right, let's see what most we have. It looks like we have a six, a seven, a nine. And I think that's it. So six, seven, nine. All right, let's look at our data. Which measure of central tendency do not exist for the data? Not what do you think? 
What's that? None of them. None of them? Okay. Uh, suppose the measurement 38, which is the largest measurement, were replaced by 58. Uh, what happens to the data? Let's see. So you got the 58. I'm going to move this all, all the way over here. Hopefully it won't affect this too much. All right. We're going to change this to 58 from 38. And our numbers changed. Who changed? Mean. Yep. And median. No, the median stayed at 9.5. Just the mean. Just the mean. Okay, suppose starting with the da original data, so which the largest measure we're going to be replaced. So just that it gets replaced. Now we've changed. That's the mean and the median. Now, now the median changed definitely. Okay. And lastly, um, meet the mean is greater. The median is greater. You cannot determine, uh, what do you think? I say the mean is greater, and that has to do with the skew. Let me explain. Um, I really want to use my pen, but I am desperately nervous that this is not going to play out. Let me try. Let me see what happens. Can you see the the screen on on there? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let's watch. I'm gonna try and draw here. Let me see if it'll it'll. Lo load quickly. I don't know about this. This is going to take too long. All right. Let me just shut this off because if not, it's going to be a crazy. So the idea is, in this case, we see how it's right skew. It's the idea is you're going to have the mode first, so it's going to be mode. The median is going to be in the middle, and the mean is going to be the lowest number. If it's left skew, and it's drawn the opposite way, then it's going to look like this. It'll have the mode out here. The median is always in the middle of the hump. And the mo the the mean is in the in the central. In central tendency, you have mean, median, mode. Everything is in the middle. Mean, the median. Sorry about the misspell. The median and the mode. Everything will be right in the middle if it's central tendency. So left skew is over here, or right skew is over here. Left skew is over here. So in this case, oddly enough, where it says the relative values of the mean and median for the original data set are the typical of the data that it's significant to the skew to the right. What are the relative values of the mean and the median of the original data set? In this case, it's going to be, you, you would think the median is going to be larger, right? It's quite the opposite. So let's check this one. Yeah. So. The question with the first part, with A. Yeah. As long as there's at least two or at least three numbers, there's always going to be mean and a median, right? Yes. Okay. The mean is always going to be the first one, which is the average. And the median is going to be that central point that divides it in half, 
So if you took a look, if you if you looked at this data set right here, you see how these numbers are going from zero to 40 and at 9.5, which is our median originally, about here, that would be about half. And then the question becomes then how many of these six are half? Well, the idea is gonna be, it's gonna be 50, 50. So no matter what the values are, they're gonna be um, pairs of each other, 50, 50. No? Making sense, not making sense? Yes, making sense. Yeah. Yes. So shall, shall we do another? Or shall we, shall we continue? Yes, do another? Yeah, can hey, we do another? Can we do another? Yeah. Right. Yes. No worries. No worries. All right. Well, this has got a lot of data. All right. Let me make it bigger so you can see it. I'm going to have you write it down, and you're going to try and do it on your own. That's a lot of data. Ouch. Let me make it bigger so you can see the whole thing. Hold on. All right. So there you are. That's all the data. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, write them down. If you want, I'll give you the average and, and the median mode. So this is the average. That's too much data for you guys. You're gonna be writing down all day long. Um, so this should make it a little easier for you. Okay, so it's the first one is mean, median is down here, and the last one is the modes. Okay, so based on this information for the data set, let me get the mean back up here. All right, for this, for the data set, which measures of central tendency take on more than one value? Mode. Mode. Um, put it back up. Suppose that the measurement 797, the, which is the largest data set, were replaced by 1168. So, so based on that, I'm gonna freeze the, these guys. So 348. Point three eight four six three one three two two one and two six five. So those are frozen. These these guys here, I'm gonna highlight them and hold them. Now I'm gonna change that seven ninety seven to eleven sixty eight. Who changed? The average. Just the average. Yeah. The average. Absolutely. Suppose that starting with the original data set, the largest 
um, measurement were removed. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And we're gonna remove this. All right, and what happened? The mean and the median change. Mean and median, yeah, very good. And so uh, the last thing that they ask here is, which of the following best describes the redistribution of the data set? Is it left skew or right skew? Is it positive or negative? Positive. Yeah, it's positive, so it's going to be a right skew, right? So let's go ahead and check it. Does the number okay. mean, okay, it's high. Mm -hmm. Yep, right skew. All right, are we feeling better about this one? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to do one more? Anybody? Yes. I would no? do one more if it's negatively skewed. I would love to. Let's see if they show that. Let's see if they show that. If they don't, I'm going to keep going until they give, they give you that one. That's a good one. Let's do this one. How about this one? I mean, that's normal distribution, but you want to do negative? I can so, do normal. Um, I, I, would do, I would do this one because this one is on Alex. On Alex okay. I did get confused right. when they start talking about this one because I think okay. this is something to do with, um, let me see. Yeah, something like this is the one that got me confused on Alex. So, Okay, so notice that this is a positive or, or normal distribution. The same as on the low side as is on the high side. The middle is what's up. So let me go to Excel. Let me send the data. Okay, let go do his thing. There it is. All right, and that's... Okay, I'm going to do it right here. So equals average. I'm going to... Highlight all the numbers. Okay. I'm going to do the median. Okay. And uh, we're going to do the modes. All right, so those are our modes. Those, it looks like two. So there's the average or mean, there's your median, and these are the modes. The modes are 13, 14, 15. So for which data set do the measures of central tendency take on more than one value? Just the modes, maybe? Mode. Just the mode. Just the mode. All right. Um, and then what's the next one? Suppose, suppose that the 36, the largest measurement, were replaced by 81. Okay. What changed? The average. Mm-hmm. Starting with the original data set, the largest measurement were removed. So let's remove it. So what changes? The average. The average again. Oops. Um, okay. And um as far as as far as anything else, nothing else changed. And then again, which type of uh, data set is this? Um, symmetrical? Yeah. This is roughly symmetrical because it has the same as on the left as it does on the right. Okay? Okay. And uh, let me check for that left skew for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let me get one. Let me get one. Let me see. This It's coming. It's coming. No. No. 
No. Right skew. Apparently, we like the right skew a lot. Another right skew. Sorry. I'm trying to get your left skew. That's really a right skew. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, this is symmetrical. Come so, on. So I, don't, I didn't see any when I did it. So They don't seem to show any. Uh -uh. But you would know it just goes on the other side. That's all. Everything else is the same. Uh, I apologize for that. Okay, Thanks. let me let me change this one up. All right, so I did a one and three. Uh, let me see what else, what else, what else, what else. Uh, standard deviation, no. Okay, let's look at then uh, number two. Go backwards, so one, three, two. Okay, now this is the the type of writing in Excel or in um in averages that requires you to make it your own. Okay, now you may not like this answer and you're gonna be mad at me for it, but it is the type of um, reasoning that you have to come to. So this is this is a question you can read it and you can state it. These are all the possible statements you can use, but you have to come up with your statement. Okay, so this one I'm not going to do with you. I'm going to tell you that this is something that I've done with other groups in the past and they have appreciated it. So, anyway, that is up to you. So let me do constructing a box and whisker plot. So constructing a box and whisker plot, you can send it to Excel if you wish, but strong, I strongly urge you to do it by hand because there's a little glitch in Excel that has a tendency to overcompensate. So FYI. So I, I am going to send it to Excel for, but for a different reason. And the reason is right here. <clears throat> so this is the box and whisker question. Control copy and let's delete this from here. Okay. And where is my Excel? Yeah. All right. Um Let me take this one. Okay, so this is the third example. The fourth one I think you need to own. So I'm gonna call it box and whisker. And <clears throat> dumping the data there. And yes, they ask you to draw it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to insert and look at how easy this is. Insert, and you're gonna go to, um, where did I do this? About this one, and you're gonna go here. And you definitely want it to show the labels. So you're gonna go to chart, and you're gonna go to data labels. And there are your values. Okay. Now it's asking you for the mean, the mean as in the minimum. So you're going to go equals minimum, double click, and highlight the numbers. Okay. I'm going to go to median, or better yet, you're going to go to quartile. So you can go to equals quartile. I'm going to go to quartile and highlight your numbers. Oh, I need to tell it what quartile I want. Well, quartile one. Quartile one. I forgot to say that. 
and hit enter. And I'm going to go to median for this one. So equals median. Double click on this. Okay, this goes from 14 to 26. Let that go. And then again, quartile equals quartile. And then this one, you want to hit quartile three. So you're going to do the array first, obviously. Comma. And this one, this time you want quartile three. And then hit enter. And that'll give you that. And then now you want the maximum. So you're going to go equals max. I always forget equals max. And once you do that, hold and drag, enter. What it does is it's basically putting the order of the numbers. So let's go here. I'm going to make this a little bigger for you. Let me see. OK. So now that you see this, you notice that I have a five for the minimum. So I'm going to put minimum here for you to remember. This is going to be quartile one. You're going to have the median, which is also quartile two. So I'm going to put dash Q2. Uh, you have the quartile three. And you have a maximum. So these are the names you're gonna you're gonna call these. So you see the max is 28. You see it right there. You see the min is five. It's right here. You see your quartile one. You see how it says 10? It's actually 10.5. It's got an 18 for the uh, for the medium, and it's got a 23 for the quartile three. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this and we're gonna go all the way to five. I need to see this. Over here, you're gonna take this all the way to 28. Okay, we have a, we have a 10 or 10 and a half. This is 18. And this was 23. So you can always check it just by hovering over it. Now, I noticed here, I'm going to show you this. You notice that's saying 10 here. Notice this is saying 10.5. OK, this is the discrepancy that I warn you with with Excel. It has a tendency to overcompensate in this case. Let's see what's wrong. Nothing. The 10 is correct. So basically, take these numbers. Your best bet is to put them in order, low to high. That's the other thing you can do. So if I go ahead and I organize this, let me see if I can do this here. Um, Because I want to set it in order from low to high. I want to sort it. So let me go here. It's not sorting. Oh, come on. Work with me here. Okay, so I expanding the selection and probably because probably because I wrote something here. So let me let me go ahead and delete this here. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, let's try to sort now. Um, 
Ay. Anybody remember where the edit undo no number is on his? It's up at the top, the yeah. arrow. The arrow? From where you are. Oh. Go, yeah, the arrow. There you go. Having a moment. Having a having a moment. Let's call it that. I don't know why is this is sorting. Because I wanted to sort it in alphabet and um, numerical order. But when you do that, you can actually do this um, very quickly. Let me show you with this. I'm going to go. You, I think if you just highlight um, box 30, 31. Uh -huh. and, yeah. And then just scroll all the way down to the end. And then hit sort. It should put them in here. You sure? Just Not, hold it like that? I think, no. <laughs> Press no, the arrow what it, again. What, what it is highlight it. Don't don't do the box at the in a um at the end. You just want to take take from box. Yes. Yeah. Click, click and drag. drag it all the way down. Yes. Okay. And then go to uh insert. I think it is. And then go to sort. It should just sort that right there to the beginning. To um. The if you if you click the continue with. What am I doing? If you go back to where you were just now. So click on the sort, mm -hmm. smallest to largest. And then the second option, continue with current selection. Yes. Click that and then click sort. Yep. No, 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 don't click that. Sort. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, not the box. You got to click the sort. All right. All right. I got this. I got this. <laughs> what happened now? Okay. Did you click the sort button? Oh yeah, go back to highlight it. Go to insert sort. Smallest to largest. And then continue, continue with current down. selection and sort. then click sort. Sort right next to cancel. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Okay. One more time. The minimum. Notice the where the location is. See the minimum? Five. See the maximum? Twenty-eight. Mm-hmm. Okay, now the median, right in the middle, 50-50. Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to highlight that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Highlighting that. Median, 18. Now, the 10.5, this comes in because this is averaging the two numbers right here. This is saying that the median is, or the quartiles in between these two numbers. That's why it's doing 10.5. And the 23 is definitely here. It's between these two. But I want you to notice that you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers here. So if I took the average of the two middle numbers, or these two numbers, or better yet, just look at the, that number. See how that's the only number in the middle? And that's why that's the median. So be careful with the median on, on odd data sets. It doesn't always work out or plan, plan out. OK. Shall we do another one of these? Or do you feel that you got this? One more. One more? All right. All right, let's do this one. Um, do you want me to send the data to Excel? There's the data. This is the one I'm keeping for you. I'm going to keep it somewhere. Oh, what happened? Okay. okay, here we are. Sorry, send the data to Excel. Okay, here we are. I think this is the old one. So our data is right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sort it. So this is your minimum. 
this is your maximum. If you want the median, I could do it by counting or I could do it by selecting it. equals median. There's your number. Now the Q1 and the Q2, this is what I'm, I'm talking about. Now the Q1, this is the half of the data set that is on that side of the median. And this is the opposite side right here, boom. Let's find the values over here. What do you think the quartile is gonna be in between this? I think the quartile for this one is gonna be nine. And I'll tell you what, it's gonna do that because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these two are the middle numbers. Add them and divide by two, the average or the average of those new is two is gonna be nine. So I'm gonna see Q1 is gonna be nine. And that's equals nine, not negative nine. Now Q3, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, this is gonna be 27 and a half. So I'm gonna say Q3 is equal to 27 and a half. But I'm gonna also do equals quartile. Watch. And I want Q3. So I select Q3, enter. It says it's 31. I don't believe that. Let's do equals quartile. And this time I'm gonna do the whole data set. Okay, let's do the whole data set and let's say three. Now it says 27. Okay, let's go to quartile equals quartile. Highlight everything. And I'm gonna say quartile one. And that does say nine. Okay, so let's go with this these numbers and let's see. So quartile one is five. Uh the other one was thirty-nine. Thirty-nine, and so I have the minimum of the maximum. Let's move Q one to nine. Move this twenty. And let's move this twenty-seven. All right. Any questions that you might have so far? When it came up with 31 for quartile three there, is that why you're saying you would tend to not want us to use Excel for it? Yes. Okay. I don't know if you noticed, but my, my cure for that for my Excel was to select everything. Everything, yep, okay. And then it corrected it. You can select everything and do quartile one, quartile three, and that should work. <clears throat> so here we go, let's check. We are good. 
All right. What other questions of this type or or do can we move on or what where are we? Good. Yeah, good. good. Move on. Let me get okay. And let's do proportion st standard deviation. So let's do this. This is um population standard deviation. So this is this has to do with central tendencies as well, or not central tendencies, measures of dispersion. Okay. In measures of dispersion, you're dealing with how far apart data is from the center. Okay, so if I have a one, two, three, three, two is in the middle, and between one and two and two and three is a difference of one. The standard deviation is a difference of one. If it is data that is larger, which like this, for example, I have 32, 26, 28, 25, 32, 20, you know, this is different, okay? This is still going to give you, there's a central number and there's a difference between the first number, the next number, first number, the next two numbers, and so on. So let me send the data to Excel first. And... I'm going to send it back to the other one because I want to send you the main copy that I have. So. Okay, so going back to this one. So here I'm going to ask you for... Um, Is the population standard deviation example. All right. So you have 32, you have 26, you have 28, you have 25, you have 32, and you have 25 again. So this is all of the data. Whether it's in order, not in order, does not matter. It's not going to matter. So in this type of, uh, of writing, you have to remember, I talked to you about measures of center. So let me talk to you about that real, real quick. Measures of center. And we talked about mean, median, mode, right? So there's a mean. In the mean, there's a population mean. And there's a sample mean. So do you have all the data, every single piece of data you need, or do you have one piece of data or smaller piece of data? So it's like having a bag of M&Ms. You know how you have um, the big bags that they tell you that are like to share the shareable size? So that could be your population. And if you took a sample of it, you take the two, three, four M&Ms out of it. That would be your sample. Make sense? All right. Yes. So in the mean, we use what's called X bar. X bar has a little bar on top. Uh, some bar on top. Um, let me see if I can do, let me see if I can do formula, formulas that I have. Um, if I go to insert symbols, um, let me go to symbol. Yeah. Okay. So X bar. What does X bar looks like? Um, okay. So this would be mu. So if I want over here, um, and I selected this mu right here, so I'm going to select it and put it here. You see that U? That's uh for population. This would be for population. Population mean.
That's called mu. Mu, just like it sounds, mu. For the sample mean, this one would be, let me see if I could get that one to show. This would be, okay, let me see, I've got the X's, give me an X. I need an X on a bar on top. Uh, see x bar do you see any x is there i don't see one it's an x with a bar on top Do you see it? Anybody see an X with a bar on top? I just see an X so far. I just an X, right? But I need an X with a bar on top. No. Okay, what do I have here? A bunch of views are nice. No. This is the best way I can show you the symbols because if I don't, then you guys are like a little out of out of whack with them. You don't remember. So no, I don't see them here. That's fine. Okay, so imagine an X. I'm gonna draw an X and I'm gonna put a bar on top of the bar of the X. Um hmm. when you say a bar, is that just a line or a line? A line. Correct. So let me see if I could um no I don't have that I don't have that ability to do that let me it's it's an X to the bar on top just imagine an X to the bar if you could please <laughs> imagine it um so X bar is what does the sample mean. So in our case, we have populations that also have the same. The population standard deviation is uh, uh, lowercase sigma. So equals strange harder word noise equals STD. So you always going to go to standard deviation dot p for population. So double click on standard deviation dot p and highlight and drag and hit enter and that is your standard deviation for the population. That's a three. You understand because it's still looking at the differences of the differences. It's like there's a difference between the standard deviations. We're looking for the difference of differences. So the answer is three. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I went through the whole step of finding the mean, dividing it, adding it, squaring it, and it, then the square root of it. I did the yep. whole thing because yep. I tried to do, I couldn't figure out what the formula was for in, in Excel. So mm -hmm. I just took it step by step. But for some reason, even when I did it step by step, I got the population one wrong. I don't okay. know what happened, but I got the standard sample correct. And I used the same thing. Oh, the reason is using the minus the the minus the one though. I did do the minus right. one and I did okay. get it right, but I used the same steps for both of them. But for some reason I got the population question wrong. But got the regular standard deviation one sample right. So standard deviation, you just divide by n. Yes. For the sample, you divide by n minus one. And it's minus one, yeah. But I don't know what happened. For some reason, I got the population right wrong. But I'll go back and try it again. Because we yeah, could, so I did see that it says for the homework, you could do more than one time, um, many times, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially week one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, just high again, 
It's it's equal standard deviation. Look, you see it on the screen. STDEV dot P, P for population. You highlight all the data and it's doing the formula for you. If not, you said you gotta you gotta you know, find the average, subtract the every every single one from the average. Take the square root of that. Oh wait, okay, you know, too much. <laughs> so in this case, just three. Um. So, so does the sorry does the x with the line over it have a like a name? The sample mean. The sample mean. That is x bar. If it's a population mean, it's mu. It's u, it's mu. And sorry, real quick. Does it oh. matter if it's the lowercase x or capital X? Okay. So in the sample, everything is lowercase. In the population, because it is a population, it's considered to be a more formal addressing of the data, it's capital letters. Even in the formula for the standard deviation, for example, this is capital N. As opposed to the sample standard deviation where we're dividing by N minus one, well, lowercase. Okay, um, let's do another one. Is that okay? Yeah. Let's do another one. You, you, you're you gonna do it by hand. It's gonna, you're gonna drive you crazy. Do an Excel. It's only five little numbers. Open up an Excel, five little numbers, throw them in. So in this case, it would be uh, 32 oh my God. Hold on. I'm in Excel hell right now. Uh, what are you doing? No. Hold on a second. This is one of the hazards of using Excel that you run into little glitches. Okay, so this is, okay. Okay, so that's a new one. So we're going to go here, we're going to highlight the data. And we're going to bring it down to our new sheet, which is this one here. And we're going to put in 32, 28. 33, 34, and 18. And then once you have that, it's five little numbers. You could copy them yourself. Go, go equal STD and then dot P. But that's what you want, dot P. Hold the, hold the numbers down and drag. And you have 5.865. Let's see how many numbers they want. Okay, let me throw this one out of here too. All right, so they want us to find the standard deviation and they want us to round the two decimals. So two decimals, again, you highlight the number, we want to go small, so 5.87. All right, does it seem easy to you? Yeah, relatively. So now, that if... I, now that I know what the formula is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do the sample standard deviation. Sample standard deviation is the same. You're going to say equals. So let's go here. I'm going to go ahead and I think this is our data set. Yeah, this is our data set. So let's go to sample standard deviation. I'm going to call it sample so you can use that. And I'm going to ask you to average out 11, 12, 
7, 6, and 9. And again, this is going to be equals std dot s. So if you look at it right here, it's stdev dot s, highlight, hold it down. It's going to be something really small. Yeah, 2.54. So they want us to round the two decimal places. So again, if you're not good at rounding, throw it in and push it to there. Two dots, 2.55. And voila. So that should be pretty easy so far, I hope. I'm not going to do another one. I'm sure you can unless you want me to do another one, I don't know. Um, let me go ahead and kick, kick out of here. So now this is the next one, comparing means without calculations. This is also easy. My suggestion for this one, and I know it says don't use anything, just whatever, figure it out. The thing is, my my reasoning is when you think about the average, you're looking at, at how centered things are, how close they come together. My suggestion to you is the black the with the boxes. So for example, for this one, comparing averages. Um let's do let's do four of them because there's four of these. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to call this um, A, B, C, D. So bear with me. So let's look at A and, and look at my logic. In A, I'm saying I have a two. I have two threes. I have three fives. I have a six, I have an eight, and I have a 12. I'm going to go to B. And B, I have a two. I have two threes. I have three fives. I have one six, one eight, and one eleven. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Okay, I'm going to go to a C. Yeah. And C, I have a two. I have two threes. I have three fives. I have a six. I have a nine and I have a 12. And lastly, lastly on D, I have a two. I have two threes. I have three fives. I have a six. I have a 10. And I have a 12. And what, I, what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to average. And I'm going to take the average of the first one. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other, other three. So I'm going to literally drag it. And now, according to this, they want the smallest to greatest. So my smallest looks like it's B. My next one is A. Is A and then C and D. And check it. And that's all you have to do. The reason I say do that first, as, as you become accustomed to it, it'll start to make sense to you. Like when you first see it, it, it may not make sense why A is the smallest, 
or B is the smallest, and then A, and then C and D. But you'll start to see how the distributions play out. Okay, and so that's how I would like for you to approach this one until you get used to it and accustomed to it. Is that clear? Is it easy? Easy? Yeah? Okay. All right, so if that's easy, let's do the D, uh, this one, the standard deviations. And you're gonna do the same thing. So now how how dispersed are, are things? How, how far apart are they? So you're gonna do the same thing. Comparing. Okay, so in this one, for example, um, uh, we're going to call them A, B, C. Oh, we're going to go up and down. So in A, we're going to go with two, a four, three fives, three sevens, an eight and a 10. We're going to go to B, and B, I have a 3, a 4, three fives, three sevens, an 8, and a 9. And lastly, for C, I have two fours, Three fives, three sevens, two eights, and now we take the the value that we're looking for. They want us to do um, sigmas. Those that's the symbol for sigma. It's per population. So equals std dot p. We want the dot p. And highlight and drag. And that's your standard deviation for the population. Do it again, equals. And we're going to go with std.p again. We want a population. Or you can always drag and drop, drag and drop. So for this one, I obviously, um, so who's my smallest? B. And who's the next smallest? B. And the next one would be A. And there you go. They want lowercase letters, big deal. Um, so that is the homework for week two. And so any questions so far? No? Does it seem easy? Did I skip any step they want me to repeat? Let me know. It makes sense now. <laughs> good, 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 good. Seems a lot easier when you're on here with us doing exactly. it. Exactly. That's, that's the idea. That's how it's going to be for, for the remainder of the class. Um, I did post a week one assignment, and I did also ask you that if you didn't have a chance to uh, get in and do that, go ahead and do that and get it done. It's an easy hundred. It's the same question. It's two types of questions. It's pretty easy. All right. Um, any questions for me? Nope. I believe today, um, this week, you have the Excel project. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Um, any parameters or anything on that, or just the any? One thing, no. The one thing I will tell you is I, I gave you some data myself, but I'm also um asking you if you want to use something else. That's fine. But use continuous data and the, the chart. Listen to the keyword. I'm looking for a chart for use as you describe this data. The chart is going to be a histogram. So that means the data has to be continuous. Make sure it's continuous uh, quantitative data. And I want to see the chart. 
it would be nice to see a chart that's written as part of the assignment, not some side thought or some last minute hurrah, um, you know, use the chart, use colors. I love colors in the charts. Um, yeah, that's it. Any All questions? Right, and then just, just model it after pages yeah. 70 and 71. Yeah. Okay. Too easy. All right. You, you got this? Not nah, uh, we'll be reaching out. Oh, and that, yeah. And that's due on what? Sunday, right? Yeah. No, it's due. Yeah. Okay. It's not, it shouldn't be a difficult question or assignment. It's just, it's a little blurb. It's a little, you know, draw the chart, one page, two pages. It's, you got it. It's not meant to be the crew de ta. That one is the, the C project. So start thinking about the C project. Start thinking about um, what you think you'd want to research. Basketball stats, football stats, soccer stats, no sports stats. I want to do candy. How many M&Ms are in a, in a bag of candy? I don't, I don't care. Think about, make it fun for you. Make it something that you're going to enjoy. Because you're going to be, for six weeks, you're going to be working with that word, with that data. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. Anything else? No? All right. Well, then no. go, go no. slap that no. homework. No. Silly. No. All right. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Have a good one. Have a great one.